Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're going to be talking about one simple reason to build your next web app with HTMX. So this year I've been exploring HTMX for building web apps fast and cheap. And I built several projects with HTMX and written many posts about my experiences sharing it here on my blog and also here on the channel. And here I wanted to share the number one reason why I think you should consider building your next web app with HTMX. So why build with HTMX? And I think the answer really is simple. And I've tried to explain this a lot on the channel, but I think, you know, I get too into the weeds sometimes. And sometimes we just need to back up a little bit and, and think about the big picture. And the reason you should build with HTMX is because it makes it simpler to build modern web apps. That's it. That's why you should build your next web app with HTMX. And I'll give some examples of like why this is. Um, first off, it allows you to just build apps as multi-page applications, MPAs. And this is how we've been building web apps for like decades. And the only reason we moved away from, you know, MPAs is because it was a little bit clunky. It, it was hard to get like these nice, smooth user experiences. But the thing is that HTMX actually allows us to achieve the UX of single page applications. These things like React and SvelteKit, Next.js, etc., which really only achieve this by allowing for partial reloads. HTMX allows you to do this even with the old multi-page applications that we've been building for years and years and years. And so you basically get the functionality of SPAs with the complexity of MPAs. It's just simpler. And then the last thing is that HTMX plays nice with HTML. It really is just, you know, hypermedia extensions. And so when you use it, it feels native. Obviously it's not native yet, but there are proposals to make what HTMX allows go and be native so that we can just get it with plain HTML. It would just be in everyone's browser, but it basically plays as if it is native, just using attributes to affect how this hypermedia actually acts. And what this means is there's no new frameworks to learn. There's no new JavaScript thing. There's no version like 14 of something that then changes everything and breaks your whole app and stuff. It really is just HTML with a few extra features. And so this allows you to quickly onboard because it only uses things you're already familiar with. So Markdown that basically controls the request that's going to be made, what happens to the response and gives you some HTML that you can do something with. That's it. And together what this allows you to do is achieve a lot of functionality with very little extra features and complexities. It's basically just hypermedia, which is what the web runs on today, just adding a little bit of extra features to it to make it achieve really what the browser and the web should have been able to achieve all along. And another interesting thing that this unlocks is that it means that if your technology can handle web requests in HTML, then it can run HTMX. And this makes it really easy to add to existing multi-page applications that you might already have have in your, your business, or maybe you built something like 10 years ago, it's very easy to get the extra benefits of HTMX without breaking the entire app. And it also gives you the flexibility to build with basically any programming language and server combo you want. And I think this one is really crucial and interesting because I feel like for the last decade or two, we really kind of were shoehorned into going towards JavaScript because JavaScript is the only thing that allowed us to build these rich UX experiences that had fast reloads. Um, and so we we're all pushed towards things like Vue and Angular and SvelteKit and React and Next.js, all because there was no really other competitive technology. But as we're kind of seeing more recently, you know, Ruby has its turbo stuff. There's been a holdout over there, staying away from the front end languages. Elixir in the past few years has gotten super popular with things like Phoenix Framework, which basically is doing what HTMX allows. That's that's why it's so cool and powerful. Um, and now what HTMX is saying is like, well, let's just let all web pages do this. So you can build like in my case with F sharp on the back end and get a really rich user experience very simply without having to use you know, JavaScript framework hell. And to me, that's a pretty compelling argument, I think. And so all in all, HTMX is simple. There are no new paradigms. There are no new frameworks. It really is just plain old HTML with the ability to send web requests from more places and more precise control for where to put the HTML responses. That's really, and yet that unlocks so much power for web apps that you're building. Next. So I've thoroughly enjoyed learning about and building with HTMX this year. It's allowed me to build more full stack apps faster and cheaper using the technologies I love. I largely just build F sharp on the back end now and that can control all my user interfaces because HTMX unlocks all of this extra UX capabilities. And I think a lot more, uh, you know, 
especially indie developers and people building side projects would benefit from HTMX because you can achieve so much with so little. Um, but I also think a lot more um, businesses could really benefit from using HTMX for the simple reason that it is simple. You don't necessarily need to hire a dedicated like front end person who really understands like React and whatever the latest like state thing you've got going. It really is just like back end stuff. And so these companies like Retool and stuff who are building really just dashboarding. And the reason that's useful is because it's hard to build front ends with all this JavaScript stuff. Um, kind of gives the power back to the developers. It's like, oh, you want a, a nice little page and when you click the button, it refreshes this thing and pulls the new data. Easy, I just make an MPA, slap on HTMX. And so I really think HTMX has legs and uh, yeah, I think everyone should kind of give it a shot. Question for you is why do you like or dislike HTMX and what are you using to build web apps? I'm always curious, like, you know, the, the best things people have found on their own techniques because then I can try them out myself and in my own projects. Now, if you like this post, you might also like why you should choose HTMX for your next web-based side project and ditch the crufty multi-page application and complex single-page application. You might also be interested in simple interactive islands with F-Sharp and HTMX, which gives an overview of how I am building most of my web apps these days, F-Sharp and PA, and then sprinkle in HTMX. Um, to get the extra dynamism and user experiences when I need it. And finally, might be interested in what it's like to run HTMX in production, stories from experienced software engineers. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.